Now the other time that I've seen a brown snake uh, bite a creature it was a feral cat which is by the way one of the great predators of snakes in Australia oddly enough. You know see how humans interfere with the things? We make the snake population increase then we introduce cats from Europe and then the cats get out into the bush and they breed up wild and they're feral cats. Now this feral cat was on a farm property owned by a lady that I was doing some work for and uh, she had probably 150 cats hanging around a farmyard. She encouraged them there because they keep the snakes down. A lot of farmers won't do this, but she was like a, a farm, a, a hobby farmer, you know. She was actually a nurse and she just had this property, you know. Uh, most farmers don't encourage um, domestic animals on their property. You know, if you can't sell it and eat it, farmers won't have it there generally. Sorry if you're a farmer, but that's the truth, isn't it? Now, um, some of these cats were, were bobtail cats, you know, manxes, and they were very large, you know, probably uh, a big, as big as a small dog. And they were obviously used to, to eating snakes, rats, you know, larger creatures like this, bring down rabbits. You know, I watched uh, one of the cats bring down a rabbit one day, uh, an adult rabbit. So they're, they're quite a uh, feisty creature and a cat is a powerful predator. Now, um, there was a brown snake in, in one of the sheds and uh, we had to get into the shed and we, she knew that the brown snake was breeding and that had young in there. Um, so it was a big female brown snake apparently. Uh, I hadn't seen it, but um, I was working with a young Italian lad and you know Italian guys know a lot about farms and, and growing things generally and uh, he said, you know, that his father, who I respected very greatly as a, as a farming man, told him that if you put out a, a plate of milk and let it go warm in the sun and then put a radio on the ground so there's a bit of vibration alongside the plate the snake would come for the milk. Snakes like milk, apparently. Anyway, so we put the, the milk on the ground and uh, I felt like an idiot because we were just sitting there looking at a saucer of milk with a radio on the ground from, while we were having lunch. And lo and behold, this huge brown snake came out from under the shed door and slithered over towards this saucer of milk and started lapping it up. Now, I'm not kidding you, this actually happened. So if you want to try it, then do, but it worked on this occasion, you know. Um, Something I learned, brown snakes like milk. Uh, they like eggs too, so I guess, you know, goes together. Maybe they like omelettes. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we're being light-hearted here. So, uh, the big Manx cat, the, the biggest Manx cat out of all the cats that were sitting around, decided that it didn't want this brown snake in its yard, and so it attacked it. And, uh, you know, it's one of those times when you wish you'd had a, a video camera with you to get, get this uh, on, on the film, you know. Uh, and it was a battle royal. Like, I mean, they were really going for it. The snake was striking and so on. Now, the brown snake was, was quite thick around. You know, females, when they're breeding, they, they feed up. Um, but generally, this was not a young snake. You could see because, like, if you get a snake that's as thick as your wrist, a brown snake, that's, that's a fairly, you know, advanced in age snake. They live for about 10 years, roughly, like, something like that. It's a bit hard to determine, but something like about a decade in, in length of life. Um, but this one would have been up to two wrists thick at parts of its body. So this was a very, very large snake, around about 1.8 to 2 meters long, which means that its strike length is up to about half the length of its body. It will coil and then strike. And so the cat was having a great old time dancing with this snake and he was ripping into it. The cat was winning, hands down. <laughs> the cat was so fast and cats, you've got to see a feral cat when they they were in a fighting mood. There's something to watch. And he was ripping at the snake with his claws like this and every time the snake went to strike he'd whack it behind the head and blood started to come out of the snake everywhere. He was winning the fight. But then the brown snake got in one lucky bite. Now this cat just went boom like that. Instantly. And it fell over. Stiff as a board. I've never seen anything die so fast in all my life. So from this you learn perhaps that between the sheep, which is a different creature to a cat, the cat's got a high metabolic rate therefore its blood flow is faster, but body weight plays a large part in how quick the toxin works. And also, of course, even though the brown snake has got small fangs, they're only about three millimetres, even in a big snake like that one was, um, they can have a good bite and put a lot of venom into you, or uh, you might just get a, you know, a drop, you're still gonna die, but uh, the, 
speed with which you die and the power of the venom on your body will vary, but body weight plays a large part in it. Uh, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? You know, because the venom's got to distribute all over your body, so the more blood supply you've got, the larger you are, the longer you've got before the venom starts to act. But it's going to, because it's an extremely powerful venom. So that's the eastern brown snake. 